All right, we're back. Thank you guys. Whew. All right. It would help if I put my headphones on. Okay, let's see. So I have to write another poem now? Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah, she likes that. Wait. Okay, there it goes. Uh, agonizing. Okay. Anxiety. I don't know that guy. This one's like a really hard to figure out. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what she would like the most. Um, okay, yeah. But I think it's like she likes fancy words. So maybe. Okay, I think I'm getting this now. She likes the fancy words, oh, most of the time. I'm trying to find like the most, like, um, difficult sounding words. Okay. Or well, it's like not com. basically it's not commonly used words you have to use. Um. I thought it was just like lonely words, but now I'm realizing that it's, you know, like fancy words, words that you don't use very often. Okay. Um. But that doesn't always necessarily work. Heartbeat. I mean, this computer, it keeps constantly getting pop-ups. Frightening kitty anime existence. Okay. Um. Do, 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 do. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> oh, okay, so she's a cheapskate. She's gonna have him pay. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I could lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so that only leaves one option. Oh, I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> 
Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell him to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayuri. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is far enough bear enough retribution. Ah! Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Ugh. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayuri, I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayuri knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayuri. <laughs> Pop. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayuri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayuri glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> That's key. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sorry, hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayuri rapidly tears open the wrapper and gives a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayuri suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayuri gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ugh, oh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayuri off of her. Oh. Sayuri suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. That sounded really wrong. <laughs> hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful Sayuri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayuri... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys aren't worried or anything. Huh? Monica chose the club for her boyfriend after all. Excuse me, chose. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? 
Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Uh. Well, my. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I read that wrong. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't where he played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love a chance to share it once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss... So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I just believe Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. <laughs> it looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, uh, Crap. I think she knows me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh... Well, when I stopped in the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and reli relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous uh, looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally give up, give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kind of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. I can kind of relate to that. It's just that those kind of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly when you thought you related to the protagonist, they are made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. 
So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the ne seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead of using my right hand to hold the book open, uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. Ugh. Speaking of, my arm just went numb right now. Ugh. Ugh. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Uh, are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a little distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used, as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently lifts, letting go of the page, then letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a little silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Y you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I'm more meant. I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone! I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have had enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? 
Um, I guess I don't have too much preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little bit more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters on your own time. All right. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. It's poem time! And I guess I'll do the same. I'll show yours first. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends? <laughs> she probably doesn't have any. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Okay, it's a little longer than the last one. <clears throat> the raccoon. Oh shit. I didn't read it! Bring it back! Oh, okay, good. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife ha was the symptom. <clears throat> the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Pavlovian kind of takes it out a little bit. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at base value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. But sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. 
The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Boo. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. <laughs> I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Which poem should I do next? I guess Monica's. Hi again! How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright! Great job! I was going oh in my head while reading this. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> Too true. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Unlike Sayuri, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. Yes, it is a dating sim or visual novel, whatever you call it. It's, it seems like something that's kind of like gotten popular recently. But there, when you start it up, there's like a warning that it's not for kids. And if you're not into like weird stuff or like disturbing stuff, don't play it. So I'm kind of like, uh, okay. So I thought I'd give it a shot. Plus it was free on Steam, so <laughs> I thought... Why not? But so basically this guy joined, like his friend forced him to join this literature club and every day they like share poems and stuff. It's so far it's fairly interesting. Free is good, yeah. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl in a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. I think some people, they probably didn't even expect people to scroll all the way down here. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. 
or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What should I show my palm to? Who should I show my palm to next? Well, I guess this is how I did it last time. Hmm. I liked your last one better. Oh, because Natsuki like writes poems that are like super blunt. She's talking about the fourth wall. Yes. <laughs> Monica, that is. Yeah, no, I know, I know. I know, that's what she was talking about. I just thought it was funny that she, like, starting that out of the blue, because... But from what I hear, like, the game slowly gets really weird. I don't know how exactly, because I almost know nothing about this game. But... I thought, hey, I don't mind a little weird, so... Why not? But Yanatsuki, like, uh, writes really simple stuff and direct stuff in her poems, whereas Yuri, the one I'm trying to date, is, like, a lot more complex. <laughs> well, yeah, I can tell you were a little more daring with this one, but you're really not good enough for that yet. It fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. I'm still figuring this all out. I mean, I always like poems that aren't trying too hard. I hate when people try to sound fancy or add more meaning just by using annoying and complicated language. Just make it simple, cute, and to the point. Oh yeah, and she likes cute things. Yuri's head over heels for all this cryptic nonsense, but I see right through that BS. Ha! Making your reader look so hard for all this deep meaning is just an excuse to have no meaning at all. I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already. Uh. Anyway, here's my poem. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> this one's a little longer than the last one. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't- oh shit. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> wow. Not bad, right? Yeah, not bad. Not particularly good, either. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Well, oh, damn. <laughs> yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some sort of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Uh-oh. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? 
I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh? That's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in the poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Why conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Well, she's the only one left. Now, Sayuri is like your friend that you've known for a long time. She's like your neighbor. She's just super cutesy and hungry all the time. And she's kind of lazy. <laughs> <coughs> but she's just like the good girl, I guess. Oh! I like this one. It has some nice feelings in it. Oh, I'm glad. Still, though. Your tone makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. <laughs> I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know you and me a little too well for my own good. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no. I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you. Never ever. Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um... I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go to by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure what that's exactly how it's supposed to work. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you wanted to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a little of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Zayuri. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow! Sayuri, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? I'm not gonna lie, that expression's a little cute. That little, oh! Expression that she has right there. It's actually kind of cute. Maybe I'm getting better expressing my feelings after all. Thanks! I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Fuck are you writing, boy, bitch? <laughs> Hers are like kind of simple. She could give you cavities with her sweetness. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. This one is like. She kind of writes her poems last minute. They're kind of like simple. <laughs> Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle and keep it safe. 
and I put the bottom on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets, hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile beneath, between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay then, that was interesting. Holy crap. The sun was actually pretty decent. <laughs> Sayuri, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yay! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. <laughs> I wonder if this one is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone! We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need in much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Pooh. Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting, excuse me, in all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <coughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh -huh. Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. 
If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. <laughs> Man, that sounds wrong too. Finding new horizons and having fun! That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it... If all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayuri and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It, look like, it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move into the main event. Onto the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh, of course! Now let's see. Monica flips her notebook in the specific to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayuri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rest of the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! Uh, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayuri? I I'll go next. Oh, huh. Yuri's fired up all over the sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? I think I have an idea why. As Yuri gets past the first couple lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into, a sh into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught off, so off guard that we must have forgotten. Why did Yuri get fired up? Well, I'm pretty sure it's because she's interested in our protagonist here. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. 
Sorry hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, uh <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sorry begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice has made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayuri is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayuri's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayuri meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayuri finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayuri. <laughs> even he liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayuri. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to be in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Mm. Don't make me go before him. It's not like I can compare you to you guys anyway. Might as well let him lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then! That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because we have to. <laughs> because you're presenting. <sighs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about after the fe for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think it's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. 
There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayuri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayuri? Yep! Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today Sayuri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey Sayuri. Huh? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayuri fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well. Okay. If I were actually put in this situation, I would probably say this because I wouldn't want her to feel bad. But since I'm trying to get with Yuri, I would have to, I would have to pick this one, I would think. Sorry, sweetie. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Woo, doki doki. Doki doki. I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Oh yeah, you have to do this every night. Like, when the day ends, you have to do this. You're basically kind of picking words to write for a poem. And you have the girls right here to like figure out what. You have to basically pick words that would satisfy the girl that you want. And with her, with Yuri, you have to find like really complicated words. Or very complex words. And see, she'll jump if it's like something she would like. Okay, she did like that one, okay. do like one more cycle of days and then I'll probably quit because you know with visual novel games you have to read a lot and it kind of tires your throat after a while from talking okay so mm, let's this one okay um, these are all kind of simple words though See. Oh well. You have to pick 20 words. Yes, you do. You have to pick 20 words. You have to like pick ones that are for her, for Yuri, you have to pick ones that are kind of like complicated sounding. Um and some of them are kind of simple. 
So it's kind of hard to tell. Okay. Um, I'm guessing unrequited. Oh, no, never mind. See, sometimes they're kind of hard to tell. Okay. Mm. This one's a complicated S word. Okay. <laughs> some of them are kind of easy to pick because, like, some of them, I don't even honestly know what the hell they mean. Not similar, but like mm. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up the piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember when the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Eh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. So the Natsuki means squid? Isn't that Kalamari? I don't freaking know. Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Yeah, I guess not. Well, yeah, not an English translation. <laughs> it's kind of funny how I guess she has like fourth wall breaking. Ah, yeah. oh, never mind. Ika means squid in Japanese. Oh, so that's why they separated. Oh, okay, so that's why she separated it. But I mean, she did make a point like it doesn't make sense in translation with this English, anyway. Let's just focus on our own event for now, anyway. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayuri's, anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayuri, anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayuri is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayuri. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah! Eh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Yeah, it's really random that I know that. But also, does... I don't know if I'm right, but does Yuri mean ghost in Japanese? Because I've heard that word before, and then they made a joke earlier that you didn't see. 
like she made a poem about a ghost and the narrator says like do you have a thing for ghosts jeez you worry too much about me i'm fine see sorry shows me a big smile don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone well all right if you say so, I worriedly glanced at Sayuri before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayuri recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. Yure. Yeah, that's why I thought it was Yure, but Yuri sounds similar, I guess, to the word. Maybe that's what they were going for? I don't know. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Hey, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber racer up and down her desk. <laughs> Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her, but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? <laughs> Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. <laughs> Monica, <laughs> you and breaking the fourth wall, man. Uh. Oh my goodness. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you. Me? How on earth did you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayuri talks about you more than anyone else, you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light has turned on inside of her. What? No way! Sayuri is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has always been. <laughs> You're so funny. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Hmm. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book, but she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord, so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. 
But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How are you even able to tell what I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I'm sure you weren't. I didn't do anything I didn't do anything creepy like that. That doesn't sound convincing. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I just... I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayuri. Sayuri? Yeah, she seems a little off today. When I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Eh? Sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayuri and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, uh, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Siri is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looks like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayuri, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? I guess. But you don't need to push that it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she were searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a perfectly, I'm a pretty simple guy. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Ah, <sighs> that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you two off to? Huh? Eh? We're just, Yuri was going to make some tea, so I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Ooh! <laughs> or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping... Involve him in club activities. Uh -huh. My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <sighs> now let's go. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. 
Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so irritated. She got a backbone all of a sudden. <laughs> she sure did. <laughs> What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. I think this music is supposed to indicate a romantic moment. I could be wrong, though. <laughs> How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions. We can't always hide them anyway. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. <sighs> No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, um... Yuri lifts her head. Uh, I really like... being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill out the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert in tea or anything? <laughs> in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed... I was doing a little bit of thinking. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with the back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. I guess, but isn't the back, isn't the wall like hard? Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. <laughs> I think I know what she's gonna say. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... My boobies? <laughs> Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. Ha! <laughs> No, you were talking about your boobies. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I keep kept hidden from Sayori's candy reindeer. <laughs> yeah, posture <laughs> sure. <laughs> yep. I take it since it's it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. 
Huh? Yuri slides closer until her shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but... When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression. And I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any... Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And then I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Hmm? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. <laughs> this turned oddly sexual. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah! Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monica! Got to ruin the mood. <laughs> jump <laughs> I know <laughs> that was hilarious actually okay everyone <laughs> what ah! Yuri jolts back it's time to share poems you can help Yuri put away that tea stuff right yeah of course Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh, I'll take her the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. You know what? I think I'm probably gonna stop here. It's kind of starting to get late. I'm starting to get on the three hour mark. And like, I'm starting to get tired of reading. So, 
We'll probably go do the poems next time on Doki Doki Literature Club. But that was really funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. I just didn't, ex I didn't expect that just that abrupt cut like that. That was so funny. I was like, what? Oh. Whoopsie. <sighs> so I see if I can save. There we go. So, but I'm always paranoid. Is it still there? Okay, good. It's still there. 